Hello and welcome to Tech 18. I am Ahmad Adnan and in this video we are going to discuss about Microsoft Fabric in detail. Not only just about theoretical things what we discussed earlier in this video, but we are also going to cover the why part of this Microsoft Fabric. Because every other video you can just learn about how we can do this process. And the reason for why it is and why we need to do this and if we do so, what will happen to the next step? So these things we are going to cover in this series. We are going to go deep dive into Microsoft Fabric. Even though it is still in preview, but it has almost all the functionalities available, so we can try it out. And this is not going to be a one video part. This is going to be a continuous series. Join me with this one. It's going to be a free series. So please join me along to this journey. If you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, I recommend you to subscribe to this channel and also hit the like button if you like this video. Now let's get started. So let me share my screen. This is going to be a live kind of session. There is no edit happens on this during the recording. So if you found some anything background wise or if you found something issue on this one, please bear with me. So welcome to Fabric Masterclass 1. So basically, I'm Ahmad Adnan and welcome to this masterclass. So what we are going to do here today is I will going to explain the steps which we are going to cover today. Basically, I will cover two things. So first thing is we are going to get the data. I mean, ingest the data into a lake house. I hope you are aware of Microsoft Fabric thing. So what it is and how it works at least in theoretical way. I have already covered few videos on my YouTube channel and I believe you have also gone through some of the other videos as well. So I recommend you to watch the videos which I have developed earlier so that you can understand about what is Fabric. So in short, Fabric is a kind of one single place for all the work collaboration between data scientists, data engineers and data analysts. So we can ingest the data, transform the data and then we can analyze the data. So in simple terms, all within one single framework, which is Microsoft Fabric. So here we will get the data of the CSV basically, and I'm going to upload it into a lake house. Basically, this is the lake house which we are going to build, and I'm going to upload it onto a lake house. So this, uh, I'm going to apply a medallion architecture, which I also explained in my previous video. That's the basically structure of we need to define at an enterprise level. Even though we are going to do a small video on this particular part, but it's actually going to be the proper structure which I want to do because I want to explain you step by step on this one. So this is going to be basically a kind of uh, medallion architecture. So the first layer, it can be this one, it should be the bronze one. We call it as bronze layer. And after that, we'll go and this is basically the raw data. So there is no change on the data structure. And after that, we are going to take this data back again to another lake host. And for this, we will use Data Factory Gen 2. Basically, that's an amazing feature of Data Factory Gen 2. It has a lot of functionality, and I'm going to cover that as well. So with the help of Data Factory Gen 2, I'm going to clean the data and then dump it again to another lake host for our reporting purpose. And this is going to be called as a kind of silver layer. And this is will be the bit the filtered as well as the clean data. And later on, once we move on to this one, I'm going to dump this data again to the gold layer. So this time again, I'm going to use data factory gen 2 itself because we have did some transformations, filtration, cleaning. So all these things I'm going to do it on silver layer and then load it into destination for the gold layer. So this is going to be the again, I uh, will dump it here into lake house. So this is going to be final version of this one, which is going to be the gold layer. And this is we can use it for business reporting purpose. And here is the challenge. So right now fabric supports direct connection between the lake house into a power bi data set. It actually contains a default data set when you're going to create that. 
I'm going to cover that as a practical also, but you can also directly use this data set and then build your report on top of that. But if you want to move a further step ahead that you want to build a data warehouse kind of thing, that also we can do that. We can take this data further again, and then we can copy the data using this copy activity pipeline, which you have it here in the Azure, which you have it here in our data factory to copy activity. And then we'll dump it this one into our SQL warehouse. So the SQL warehouse has a default data set comes in. So from this data set, I'm going to build a report of our BI, and then you can share this report with all the other people. So this is going to be the overall structure which you are going to cover in this master class. But you are going to get an insight about each and everything in Fabric. So without wasting further time. Let's go into the workspace. All right, so I have logged into my Fabric workspace and I also made a separate video about how you can activate your license. So just an overall view. So in the tenant setting, you have this option here. User can create Fabric item. So this should be enabled if you want to give access to your people. And to do these changes, you need to be a Power BI admin for this or you need to be a global administrator for this. And also I have made a separate video on the changes of the roles in Fabric when compared to previously what we have in Power BI service. So you can also make sure to check out that video as well. So coming back here, so you need to enable this one, then only we can able to create this. So once you do so, you will get an option here at the bottom of the screen. You see it here, Power BI. So once you click here, you will get all the other workloads which you have access. Usually in Fabric we have Power BI, Data Factory, Data Engineering, Data Science, and Data Warehouse, and Data Analytics. And one more it has to come, which is still in preview, so it will come up later on, which is Data Activator. So first of all, we need to do as per our presentation here, we need to load the CSV file into the lake house. So first we need to create a workspace, and then we need to create a lake house in that case. So I'm clicking on the workspaces here, and then click on workspace. So let's give it a name here. I'll just give a name here as masterclass one. And to expand this advanced tab, you have this option here about you want to go with pro, you want to go with the trial license, you want to go with the premium per user. So the trial license, what we have it here is basically this one. And if I zoom this here, select this free trial per user, and all new feature and experience in Microsoft Fabric for 60 days. So this is basically the license which you can use. So the 60 days trial period, what it is mentioned here in Microsoft Fabric, this is actually not restricted to 60 days. So that's really lucky now because this is still in preview. Microsoft is automatically extending this period. If you are opening up your Power BI service on a daily basis, it will extend it on further for further days. So we are going to select this option now, the trial version, and then click on apply. And here in the contact, you can just add the contact persons. So we have it here and there is nothing inside to this one. So watch out here step by step because I want to show you a few things here, which is really, really important. So we have it here on the Power BI and now we can see all the artifact which is related to Power BI. And if you want to create a data factory item, you can just click on data factory and then click on masterclass on the left side, which is on the workspaces. And when you click on new, this is going to give you the separate list of items, which is related to data factory items alone. So this is also an important thing. So here we have a data pipeline, data flow, gen tools, stream, events, event stream and experiment, all the other things here. And also we have a warehouse here, but we are looking for lake house. So if you click on data engineering, the next part, and again, click on master class and click on new. So here, this will give the list of available things which is related to this data engineering. And here we have this lake house preview, but also on the home tab, if you click on the home, this is also going to give you this quick options where we can create our items. So if we are in Power BI, then this is going to give as a separate list of items where we can use that. If we are in data factory, then this is going to give us data flow gen 2 or pipeline. 
So it depends on which are the workloads which you are going to use. It is going to give us separate options here. So right now I'm in data engineering and I'm going to create on lake house. Uh, we just need to give it a name here. So I can give a name here as masterclass lake house. So I'll just give a short name MC underscore lake house underscore zero one. So this is also kind of proper naming structure, which if you want to follow, you can also follow that similar structure in your enterprise it also in your organizations also. So clicking on MC Lake House 01 and click on. So before to that, I just want to mention that we need to create a medallion architecture. So we are, we need to give the naming structure as bronze. So I'm just giving a name here, which is basically the bronze is a kind of type bronze, silver or gold. And MC is basically the name of the thing which you are going to do here. And the lake house is basically the artifact and 01 is the number of series here. So instead of MC, we can also give it a different name as I'm going to load the data. As I'm going to load the data of our adventure works table itself. So I can just give it here adventure works as an AW kind of thing and then click on create. So don't worry about that. I'm again going back to the same thing, same data set which are used in Power BI videos, but this is really important. Just this is an initial video. I mean, practical video, which I'm doing it here. It can easily helpful for you to transition from Power BI into Fabric and then do other steps accordingly. But don't worry, I'm just going to, I'm not just going to cover the basic things. I'm also cover the much more de in detail about it. So while this is loading, so we need to wait for it. Uh, here is my folder, which I have all the other files, which is linked with this one. I have the dim currency. All of this are in CSV files itself. I will also go in a much slower phase itself because if you want to follow along, you can also do that. Um, I hope you also have these four files with you. If not, then I will also share this along with this video description. I don't know this is much slower today. Usually it gives us some options here where we can get the data, but this is still loading up here. On the left hand side, you see it has opened up this bronze lake house here. And if you switch back again to our class here, I mean the workspace. So you see it has added a two, three basically artifacts. One is the lake house and is a SQL endpoint and the third one is data set. So in the initial presentation, like I said, uh, the lake house also comes up with a default data set within it. So this default data set, basically we can build our Power BI report from here itself, or if you want to add a data warehouse, we can also do that. And the SQL endpoint is basically, if you want to do some kind of analytics on the SQL side, you can also make use of that. So I'm going back again. So let me close here and open up again this lake house. Let me refresh the browser. This is really strange actually. Okay, this has come up here, clicking on the bronze lake house. Okay, this is still coming up here. While this is loading, uh, I just want to tell you one more thing here. So as we are doing this bronze, silver and gold kind of architecture here, then how we are going to refresh this one. So this place where we get the use of another feature, which we have it here in fabric, which is basically the pipeline. So the pipeline with the help of pipeline, we can just orchestrate our data movement that first refresh the bronze lake house and then refresh the silver lake house and then refresh the gold lake house. So we can define the sequence of our workflow inside the pipeline. So this is where the pipeline works. So I'm also going to cover that in this video. Yeah, finally it is come, finally it is back here. So here we can see we have options on the left side, this explorer where we have the tables and files. Files is nothing but you can upload our unstructured files like our CSV or all other files if you have. 
and table is basically delta pocket format file which you have table is basically the delta pocket table files which you can load here and here we have the get data option we have four different options for the lake host which is upload files manual upload files new data pipelines new data flow gen 2 and new shortcuts so upload is basically we can add our local files and pipeline you can play around with that and this other data flow gen 2 and the new shortcut if you want to create a shortcut from other providers like amazon s3 and also data like storage gen 2 we can also make use of that but here for now i'm going to use upload files other features hopefully i will try it out on the next videos which how it works but for now i'm going to use this one upload files so on the right side it has opened up a window here i need to select the files and then let me copy the address here and then click on open folder here it has opened up this window and i will select all the files and click on open and go right if exist and then click on upload so it has given an option upload file so that's the reason i have selected as a multiple file if not i need to select one by one so this is a very small file so it should be quick enough to do this yeah this is very much fast and then that's it and if we close this one and let's refresh it here on the top left we have option to refresh So if I expand this files option here, and this has not given a here. So I click here and then refresh again. So I'm uploading it again. Somehow it has not picked up here. The following files already exist on this one. It stays here, but i think like it has happened before it is taking a bit time maybe because of my connectivity issue so while this is loading we if you click on the settings of this lake house we have this option here about which you can rename if you want if you want to add a description you can add a description here it is good to add some descriptions for your further data analytic purpose. So what is the reason for these things? An endorsement here, if you want to promote or certify this data set, you can do that. But as this is a bronze one, so only the gold you need to certify that uh, because you don't have right permission to change them. Okay, the SQL endpoint. So here it has also gives comes up with the option of the SQL endpoints. So this is basically the connections where we can use it in our external tools like SSMS can copy this and then we can pass our credentials so that we can connect to the lake house directly in our SSMS kind of thing. We can also use it for other tools. It usually happens while we are in a demo giving a presentation, it happens like this. So after refreshing, it has showing up all the files which is here. And you see it has added everything into the file sections, not in the table section, because this is a CSV file. This is not a parquet file. So we need to take this file and then load it into a lake house. So basically this is the one which we have. And as per our plan, what we have it here this is the csv and upload it manually into a bronze lake house so we have done this one basically this stuff it is done and the next step is we need to use data flow gen 2 and load it into another silver lake house so on this we need to go back again to this one and the workspace basically here we have two options one we can use the same lake house and use the data flow gen 2 to move the files from the file section to the parquet file tables area. If not, we can also create a separate lake house. It depends on your business scenario. But I prefer to be a separate lake house itself because today we have only the CSV files. Tomorrow, if you want to get the data from other table files, like from the SQL Server sources, any of this uh, relational database sources, then the data will come directly sit into the table section itself. So in that case, what will happen is the bronze layer will be the raw data for you. 
and so that you need to get a separate warehouse so that this bronze can help pull as a source raw data and the lake house can be clean and filtered data. So let's create a new lake house. We can go around like creating a data flow and then load destination, but I prefer to create the destination first and then ingest the data, get the data from the destination. So that's how I prefer to work. And if I click on new here and again, click on lake house. Here, I will just give it a name here, silver. I'm mean, just giving a short name here as a silver, bronze or gold, and then AW and then AW and then lake house underscore zero one and click on create here. So this is going to create another lake house here on this one. So this is really simple to create the lake house and all the other artifacts in general. So whatever it has to happen, the compute process and CPU assignment, everything happens behind the scenes. So that's really an amazing feature of Fabric. So now we have to get the data. So we have option here, get data. And then what we need to do here, we can use the new pipeline or we can use the new data flow, Gen 2. So what we can use? Mm, I prefer to use data flow Gen 2 because data flow is backed by Power Query. And I have made a lot of video, even a course on Power Query because it is really an amazing tool. Low code no code kind of thing. So I prefer to create a data flow itself. And when compared to Gen 1 and Gen 2, I have made a separate video on that as well. So what is the difference between these two? Data flow Gen 2 is still in preview, but still I like it most. So on the top, you see we have data flow 1. That's the default name comes up whenever you create a, any artifact inside to a lake house or a warehouse. So you need to click on here and then you can change the name. So that's also an amazing thing, which really looks like the field which we are working on an Excel file or Word file on a SharePoint. So here, I just want to give it a name here. So this is a silver, right? So I just keep the same naming structure, silver, and then adventure works, and then data flow, and then zero one. And then click on enter. So it has created this one. Now click on get data. And then we don't have this option here. Click on more. And this you can see a new interface. Usually this is not the one which we have using in Power BI desktop. It's a different interface what we have. So these are the main sources it is suggesting us. And also on the bottom we have the one leg hub. If you want to select from here, you can also do that. But if you don't want, you have a separate options on the left side which is one leg data hub. You can also have other options like new upload blank table or blank query, but here we prefer to one leg data hub. To click here, it's going to load the, all the available sources what we have it on one leg data hub, irrespective of any workspace which you have access. So that's an important thing. Access control is an important thing here. Maybe because I am sharing my screen, it is slow, but I'm not pretty sure here because just before to this session, during my practice timing, it is really fast actually. If you see here, here also we have upload option. You may think about we can also do this way, upload and then load it into lake house. Yeah, we can also do that. But if we directly have this option into lake house, then why we need to use this? Yeah, I mentioned you on the earlier itself, right? We also need to focus on why, not instead of how, we'll also mention about why. Yeah, so we can also make use of this functionality, which is directly available for us.
I don't want to keep you wait here. But let's go back to the workspace again. And clicking here, let's refresh here. So we have this workspace here, master class one. Yeah. So while this is loading, I'm not sure why it is not loading here. I want to show you one thing. So let's take a screenshot of this one. And let's come back here to our PowerPoint. New slide here. Okay, so if you remember what we have created so far, we have created here the bronze layer, which is the lake house. And when we create a lake house, it is automatically creating a SQL endpoint as well as a data set. So for SQL endpoint, we can use it for our other external tools like SSMS or Tax Studio kind of thing or Tabular Editor. Or this is basically the data set we can use for build the report of Power BI directly from the lake house. Right, this is one thing. Another thing which we have created here is the Silver Lake House. Even for the Silver Lake House, what we created just before, it has automatically added a SQL endpoint and the data set. If you see here, the data set comes up with the name of data set default. So which is basically the default data set, it comes up whenever you create a lake house or a warehouse. That's it. But here, this is a particular thing which we created just before, just now, which is this one, Silver Adventure Works Data Flow 01. So after creating this one, Power BI automatically adds these things. So one, it will add a warehouse and its default data set. You see it here, the warehouse, data flows, staging warehouse, data flow staging warehouse, the name is same, but here it is a warehouse and it's a data set. Similarly, the data flows staging lake house and here data flow staging lake house, data flow staging lake house. For all these three, basically this is coming from this and this is coming from this. So lake house, like we are seeing here, like we are seeing here, lake house comes up with SQL endpoint and data set and it has also created one more lake house with SQL endpoint and data set. Similarly, for every warehouse, there will be a data set. So why there is no SQL endpoint for Warehouse is basically warehouse is basically a SQL warehouse itself, so it doesn't need a SQL endpoint for that. So that's the reason it has only warehouse and the data set. And if you want to build a report, we can build directly from here. But this staging data flow is an internal feature basically. It is used for the internal process for the fabric. Right now, this is enabled. This is visible because it, the fabric is still in preview, but this is going to be hidden in future. Uh, the reason I don't know why they have kept it visible here, maybe they are still working on some issues here. But to be say, you don't need to play around with this thing. So these five artifacts which comes up here, if you create a first data flow, this staging is really important for the internal purpose, internal calculation. I will tell you in a just moment, but do not try to edit this one, do not try to delete this one. If you edit this, any of the artifact, if you edit or delete any of the artifacts, then everything will collapse. Whatever you have done on this workspace, you have to redo on the new workspace. Yes, this is a non-issue of Microsoft Fabric, but whatever you have to do it here, you need to be careful while dealing with these staging data flows. So don't worry about this data flow. This is going to create one time. And this will cover all the other artifact, all the other data flow, all the activity, whatever you're doing on the workspace is going to keep a record of each and everything inside to these stages itself. Because that's the kind of internal calculation which it has to do. And you don't need to delete this, any of these, or you don't need to edit these options. Even I tried this personally for my testing purpose. I had to redo everything on a new workspace. So it has created a lot of issues. Even you know that this is a particular file which you are going to delete and if you want to refresh this lake house, even though it, I delete it completely and then when I refresh the data flow, like for example, this one, it has 
created again all the other six, five things, but still the report is not working fine. It is not refreshing. So the only option is we need to create a new workspace and then do all our stuff. So this is the really important thing. The purpose of making this video entirely is because do not play around with these staging data flows. But still, I have we had to do a lot of thing here. Let's go back to this one. I'm sure this has come up now. Oh, come on. This is still <laughs> working on. So let me cancel this and let's refresh this browser itself to see if it comes up now or not. So get data here and then more. And click on one data hub. Come on. OK, while this is still loading, so let me tell you the reason why it is available and what is the reason for that. So basically, uh, as you're aware, we have this data flow destination option in Power Query data flow Gen 2, basically not in Gen 1. In Gen 2, we have this option. That's then really the beautiful thing which I like the most in one of the feature I like the most in Fabric. So basically what it does is, so whenever you create a data flow engine, it creates all the staging data flows, right? So basically it stores all the definitions of the data flow, what you have done on the query folding and other things, the transformation, everything inside of these staging data flows. And let's say, for example, you have a SQL source and from SQL source, you have done a data flow and then transform into the destination of the warehouse, for example, right? So the data source, it will get the data and then this mashup engine, which is of the Power Query, for the data movement and data compute, it will actually contact to this lake house and warehouse, which is the default comes up. So these things, which is here, the staging data flows for this warehouse and staging data flow for the lake house. So it will communicate with this lake house and the warehouse. The reason for this is basically this lake house is for the staging storage and the warehouse is for staging compute. So this will ETL, ELT, it will load the data into the lake host and this will process the data in the warehouse. And then once the transformation, everything has done, then it will load the data into the destination. So that's the purpose of the staging data flow, what we have it here as a default one. So whenever you do this kind of stuff, it is going to go through this process. So if you're using a pipeline, there you will get an option about the staging to be enabled or not. So that's basically this option. If you want to enable that, then it will go through this process. If you don't want to enable that, then it will just directly go from here to this one. It will not come up here. So that's one way. And also we have an option in data flow gen two about this loading to be enabled or not. So staging, enable staging, there is an option here. In Power BI Desktop, we have an option about enable load. So load true or false kind of, if you have a tick options, enable load, then it's basically going to load the data from Power Query to Power Pay Desktop, right, into the model. So that's basically, that's the job of enable load. But here we don't have a such options. Here we have a enable staging. So the enable staging is basically if you want to do this process or not. So that's the thing. If you want to do that, then it will go through this process and then store it into the destination. If you don't want, then it will directly go from here to the mashup engine and then to the destination output. But in both the cases, it is going to store the data into your destination table unless you mention it over there. If you have mentioned a destination, then it's going to load the data into destination. If you have not given any destination, then it will not load the data into the destination. So let's come back here again. I'm not sure why it is not coming up here. Let me close this one and 
let's open up here in another window is basically this one. So silver adventure work data flow zero one. Trust me, this is actually not the speed. To be honest, I have practiced a lot here. I have done a project, so it is really fast actually. The main thing which we need here is the one leg. It is not showing up here. That's the sad thing. If I click on view more, it is going to come up here itself. And if I search for lake house. Okay, so I don't want to waste your time to be honest. So I think I have given a good information on this topic. The main purpose of this uh, series is to give the in-depth information about the thing in Fabric. So I have given an option about why we need to use these staging data flows and why we need to use these bronze architecture. So I hope you found this video helpful. We'll cover the next in the next part of this series. Definitely I'm going to cover that. Um, so thanks you so much for watching this video till this end. And if you like this video, just hit the big thumbs up button. If you're new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed yet, just hit the subscribe button. And also please share this video with others so that they can also get aware of this functionality of fabric and why we need to use that. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Uh, see you in the next video.